Hi guys. So we're just going to work through a game that's been submitted to me. I've not seen this game. Um, I assume that the person who sent it in won the game, otherwise they most likely wouldn't be sharing. But let's go ahead and um, go through it together. So it, I think it was sent in by Rich B100, who, who's rated 11.11. This is a three-minute rapid, okay? Uh, sorry, three-minute uh, blitz game. And Rich's opponent is Aaron R, rated 17.12. So this is a 601-point difference. And we have a Sicilian, open Sicilian. All right. Now, this isn't an opening that I'm very familiar with, but Bishop out makes a lot of sense. Obviously, we're targeting f7, and we're getting ready to castle. Uh, the quickest way to castle in chess is on this fourth move, right? Because you've got to move a pawn to release the king's bishop. So the e pawn has to move. And the bishop and the knight have to come out, and then you can castle on move four. That is the quickest way that you can possibly castle. Same goes for black. If you want to castle queenside, it's an extra move because you have to move both the queen and the bishop. And that requires, then, that you move the d-pawn at the start of the game because that's the only way that you can release both of these pieces to get off the back rank. If you were to play b3 in Fianchetto, the bishop, that doesn't help the queen. Okay, so uh, five moves is the quickest on the queen side. Anyway, I digress. So this all looks normal. We have e6, blocking the path of the bishop. This is very, very typical. See it a lot. And the thing is, this bishop can, can hang out. This is what we need to remember about bishops. They're not pieces that have to go flying in with their fists at the start. They can lurk back. They can sit and wait for the board to clear up and then shoot out, right? So they're quite strategic in that sense. Okay, so anyway, we have d3 from white. Now that the bishops come off the back, we can close the light squared pawn chain and hopefully start to direct our bishops down that line. Could castle either way, get this knight involved maybe, and think about attacking the king side because that king ain't going there. Right, to castle queenside in the Sicilian must be very rare. Seeing as you've moved your seaborn. Okay, the aggressive d5, immediately opening up the center while both kings are still in the center. So black has two attackers on there, white has two defenders. So there's nothing really to be gained. If we have takes, takes, let's see what happens. Takes, takes, and now the bishop has an issue really, doesn't it? Because if it drops back, no, if it drops back, we've got this. I mean, it's not in danger of being trapped. Okay, so the bishop goes straight to b5, where it can be kicked again. And then this, and then we have to take. Yeah. Okay, but black figures that out. In fact, black is... Oh, so this has got an increment on this, I see. So it might be a 3 plus 3. Because white's on 3 minutes 05. <laughs> okay. Um, so black develops a knight. Normal move. Now, this seems to break convention, and it is, because um, the knight's already been developed to a place where it controls the centre of the board, and our priority really is to develop our other pieces before we start going on uh, waging war and launching raids against our opponent. However, there is a tactical opportunity here, and the opportunity is to take advantage of the pinned knight. So what black, what white is threatening to do, if, if black does nothing at all, white can take, take, bishop takes with a fork on king and rook, which must be blocked or the king moves and then we win the exchange as well as, uh, no, that's it, and a pawn. Yeah, exchange and a pawn. So that would be very, very good. The question is, can black refute this whole attack idea easily? And I think they probably can with, with bishop c7, but we'll see. Or, what? Okay, well, it's the second defender anyway. That's the point. Yeah. So now if takes, pawn takes, bishop takes just loses a bishop to a pawn. Um, it's also attacking the knight. So now the knight needs to decide, am I going to capture? In which case, queen can't capture. It must be pawn. But that's not a bad setup for black. And we'd leave this bishop with very little to go on. 
in this corner here. Um, or another option might be bishop takes, thinking that this bishop could end up poor. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Then we defend the knight, maybe. No, because if bishop takes, queen takes, knight with check, and then we must... White has to respond, and then pawn takes, uh, pawn takes bishop here, right? So we would actually lose material if we did it that way, if bishop takes. So knight takes, yes, pawn takes. Um, we just have to drop back to a4, yeah. And now things are looking very bleak for this guy. Okay, now black develops, and look, black suddenly has this big lead in development, right? If we just rewind slightly, here, it's equal, right? Both uh, sides have two pieces developed. Um, white has a useful pin. White is also ready to castle. So I'd, I'd give maybe white a slight edge, although black has good control over the center. So it's looking kind of equal. Now, the question that we asked is, is this tactical idea premature? And in general, it is. Right? When you've only got two pieces up, up, out on the board, don't try and launch an offensive against your opponent because a knight and a bishop together uh, will f really struggle to deliver checkmate um, unless it's like a smothered mate or the king's got nowhere to go and the king's got you know space around him. So um, with this, now something has to be done with a knight because now the knight's under attack. Takes, takes, and back here. And now suddenly, white has one piece out on the board, black has three pieces out on the board, Black is threatening to come down here and capture on h2. So we might have to see g3 now, right? Um, Black's got really good control over the center here with this, this pawn mass here. And so you'd have to pick black at this point. Okay, so we have castles, but that doesn't defend h2. Takes, king moves to h1. It's all looking a bit bleak. Okay. Um, both sides are moving quite quickly. White in particular still got three minutes on his clock, so he's not even using three seconds a move. Knight comes in. <coughs> not sure why. I mean, it doesn't need to defend the bishop that's defended by the queen. And it's not really attacking that because it's defended. It's defended only by this bishop as well, because the queen is actually eyeing up the knight. So let's see what happens. Queen e2 check. Okay. Right, so the dark square bishop comes back out to block. Okay. So white's only down one pawn, but feels like it's in a horrible situation. And it's quite an important pawn, the one that's straight in front of your king. Um, this bishop is, is really bad. I might think about something like this to try and get this bishop involved back in the game. Okay, now F, oh, right, brilliant. I missed that completely. Attacking the pin piece. F4, immediately attacks the pin piece. Then whatever happens, you should be able to win the bishop. And we win the bishop. Well done. Well done, Rich. Because I missed that one completely. All right, now. Now we're up a piece for two pawns and we have a different story. However, our king has got little to cling on to there. And we're also slow getting these pieces out. So, Rook's attacking this pawn. If we push the pawn, the bishop would have to take, or else it would... See, pushing the pawn to here blocks the bishop's defense of that knight. So if their bishop takes, doesn't benefit us in any way, really. What would I do here? The prospect is that. Um, I think probably bishop f4. Bishop f4 defends. Yes. Okay, well done. Yeah. Well done to me, that is. Okay, now attacking the pin piece. Same, exact same tactic. Right, move forward. Attacks the pawn. Pawn can't move. Um, hmm. What does Rich do? And I'm taking a lot more time than he's taking. I think I would simply develop the knight. Let him get the center with a pawn. Because he's not going to take with queen or rook, right? Then just we can just drop the bishop back. 
Think about attacking up here, maybe. Uh, See, so yeah, I developed the knight. Oh, he pushes forwards. Oh, I didn't even think of that, but it is attacked twice. Bishop and rook. So, oh, that's a weird move. B3 simply defense. I think this, well, this is even all right, because takes, 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 bishop takes. So actually, bishop B3 is fine as well. Oh, push the pawn forwards. Bishop didn't take, and you lost another piece. However, you now lose your bishop, eh? Yeah. And now knight out hits the queen with tempo. Good move. Uh, dropping C2. But that's on the side of the board that don't really matter. Um, so this hangs, this hangs. What do we do at this point in time when... Do we just go balls out offensive? Something like bishop h6. Putting pressure on here. The pawn pushes forwards though. don't know. What would you do? What would you do here? Can't push this pawn forwards because the queen falls. It might be worth a try at that. It slightly weakens the king little. And maybe something like this. Um, can't play that. Can play that. It defends the... Well, the knight's not under attack. It's these two pawns that are under attack. I don't know. Let's find out. Okay, bishop h6, yes. And, okay, right. So the rook has moved to be a second defender of that. We can now ca actually capture this pawn. Because its only defender is pinned. Yay! Okay, you grab a pawn. Let's go there. Rook... A to F1, surely. Because then we're just threatening mate in one. Yes, indeed. Oh no, my knight. Okay, so this is the discovered defense of this square. So the bishop's moved off there in order for the rook to defend. <clears throat> now let's calculate this. So, takes. Now if you go there, takes. Takes. If king takes... Queen here check, rook can't block, king has to go, so we've got queen here, the king has to go here or here. Either way, queen goes there. No, no, I'm not sure, I don't think I see it. Okay, so what else could we do here? Rook f7 looks quite good. I like that move. Right, um, yeah, because actually, this really puts the question because then it blocks the rook's defense of g7. So there, the rook has to take. Then our other rook takes. That's what I think is. Yay! <laughs> this is great fun. Okay, takes. And now rook takes or pawn takes? Pawn takes with check. King has to go here. Queen takes there. Check. King has to go here. I think either is winning. Maybe rook takes is simply best. Okay, you took the pawn. Yes. Now king has to go to e7, right? Yes. Now we can check with the rook or the bishop or the queen. And we'd like to promote at some point. If In fact, we can promote now because it forces black to trade off their rook. Okay, we'll give check with the rook. Yep. Now you have to be looking where can the king go and where can't the king go. So these are options and those aren't. And now, now we promote with... No, it's not now. Hang on. Okay, well, yeah, we have to give another check because we have to get the king onto this rank so that we can promote with a discovered check and get a free queen. Uh, yes! Gorgeous. What is there? One legal move? No. Too late. Resign. So that's a really nice finish and a good spot. <clears throat> yeah, and uh, this was this was a key moment. So we pushed our pawn forwards, right? Because it was totally overwhelmed. It was attacked three times. Just push it out of the way, right? And um, then this move to attack the bishop 
but drop the knight. So we'd already said that was a poor bishop, and this knight over here, very different uh, issue there. That was a super knight. And then we <coughs> get some tempo, black gets greedy, grabs pawns. This was a decent move. I don't know if g6 wouldn't have been better. But now, yeah, that, see, attacking the pin piece, or capturing a piece that's only defender is pinned is the tactic. Okay. And gets greedy again, and then falls to an unstoppable. But I tell you what, Rich B, what, 100 for an 11 11. That was a phenomenal game. So that was really good fun. Um, I've enjoyed myself. Hope you've enjoyed yourself watching as well. Thanks for uh, watching. Please subscribe to Chess Bootcamp if you haven't uh, subscribed. I'll see you soon.